In this edition of Tech It Out, what does the future hold for the novel coronavirus outbreak? But we can get some clues from the past. How to power hundreds of LED lights by a single drop of water? And the UN warns of devastation in East Africa over the locust invasion. Well, people expect for the COVID-19 outbreaks to come to an end as soon as possible. What future has in store for the epidemic, and what will happen to the virus? Well, we don't have the crystal ball to show us the future, but we can get some clues from the past. Both SARS and COVID-19 are known as coronavirus, so it might be helpful to compare the 2003 SARS outbreak with the current one. That might present us with a best-case scenario where the virus gets under control through public health intervention. The best way to contain the virus in both outbreaks is to identify cases as soon as possible and put the infected people in isolation. In both cases, large-scale control measures were carried out, harmful but effective. In 2003, the SARS outbreak ended in China after about six months. And one year later, it was eradicated worldwide after infecting over 8,000 people and killing almost 800. In addition, some scientists argue that a warm, humid weather of early summer greatly contributed to the fight against SARS. The same argument is being made about COVID-19, but the new coronavirus is more cunning. The latest research shows that its spike protein design allows it to hold a grip on the cell. 10 to 20 times firmer than SARS, making it easier to sneak into the cell. That explains why the new coronavirus is more infectious than SARS. It also has an incubation period of up to more than 20 days, much longer than that of SARS. All this suggests that containing it is much harder. But it doesn't mean it's a patient virus, though. It has to move fast because its single-strand nucleic acid structure is so fragile that it could be easily torn apart by powerful immune systems. It therefore causes acute symptoms in the host in order to swiftly leave and jump to another, infecting as many people as possible in a shorter period of time. But at the same time, this strategy sets alarm for humans and triggers more measures to fight against it. Well, that's why SARS was fizzled out so quickly and completely. Actually, there were just three cases after 2004, all due to lab leak. So, what happened to SARS, and where did it go? Scientists believe the SARS was hidden in its natural reservoir, the bat. The 2017, in a remote cave in Yunnan Province, virologists identified a single population of horseshoe bats. They harbor virus strains. With all the genetic building blocks of the one that jumped to humans in 2003. Furthermore, the middle reservoir between bat and human, the Sebet, was strictly banned by the government after the outbreak, preventing the SARS from crossing the line. That could explain why MERS is still hunting humans in Middle East. The middle reservoir, the camel, is a major part of local life in parts of that region. But we still have no idea about a middle reservoir of COVID-19. Another ending for an epidemic is what has been called burnout. That's what happened to the Zika virus epidemic that hit South America between 2015 and 2016. Since Zika cannot affect the same person twice, thanks to the antibodies generated by the immune system, but the epidemic will reach a stage where there are too few people left to infect. For transmission to be sustained, just like fire flames consuming all the oxygen in the room and extinguishing itself, that's not a desirable scenario because it will cause more infections and death. The last possibility paints a future where the virus is not contained. The 2009 H1N1 pandemic virus could not be contained in the U.S. and therefore spread to all across the world. 
Since then, this virus has circulated as seasonal flu. Evolution will enable the virus to find a balance between virulence and transmission. Many viruses, like HIV, will take on a milder form, trading off for a wider spread. If that is the case, COVID-19 may return seasonally and join the milder coronavirus strains that infects people as common cold or pneumonia. Hello, welcome to Science Saturday. I'm Tung Shi. Today we'll look at science news ranging from the coronavirus to a new bioimaging method. First, scientists have explained the relatively high infectivity or the ability of the novel coronavirus to spread from a biological perspective. Unlike most common viruses, COVID-19 has many spikes on its surface, which can be observed under the microscope. They're actually proteins. Once they make contact with a receptor called ACE2 on the surface of cells, they can infect them. During this process, the spike protein works like a door opener, allowing the virus to get inside and cause infection. Researchers from the University of Southern California have developed a new tool to better observe what's happening inside the bodies of living creatures. The new technology is called Spectrally Encoded Enhanced Representations, better known as SEER. It can help medical scientists to develop better diagnostics or treatment for certain diseases, including detecting cancer or damage from pollutants. Compared with current biological imaging techniques, SEER can provide greater clarity and work up to 67 times faster at over two times greater definition. Scientists from the City University of Hong Kong have developed a novel electricity generator. It's based on droplets, enabling a single drop of water to power a hundred LED light bulbs. The device functions with high energy conversion efficiency and its instantaneous power density can be increased by thousands of times compared to current technology. Scientists say this invention can help advance research on hydropower generation and sheds light on energy crisis solutions. The United Nations has called on the international community to help with African countries affected by swarms of locusts. Ethiopia, Somalia, Tanzania and Uganda are the worst hit states facing potential food insecurity for 13 million people. The locust disaster has expanded to South Asia, forcing Pakistan to declare a national emergency. The species often gathers in swarms and inflicts extensive damage by devouring plants and crops. It's estimated a swarm can contain about 40 million locusts per square meter and consume the same amount of food in a day as about 35,000 people. Well, that's all for today. If you have any comments, please let us know and stay in touch with us on our website and social media platform. This is CGTN's Tech It Out. See you next time.